Back healthcare sector hitting a new all-time high earlier today, but Credit Suisse is getting sick of one name in that space. The analyst downgrades Gilead to an underperform rating, cutting the price target to $63. It's our call of the day, wow. and Shannon Sakosha owns it. I do. <laughs> um, so I, you know, in reading this report, I, I, there's nothing new here. You know, the, the, you know, if you look at the challenges that this company has faced, it's, you know, a, a, an HIV franchise that has been, you know, what's essentially driven all of their growth over the last several years from a revenue and EPS perspective. It's a new CEO. It's the need for a transformative acquisition. So if I look at this from my perspective, I look at it from a valuation perspective. And so do you think that this value discount can be, you know, can be unlocked? And I think that when I look at the, the HIV franchise, I think this report from Credit Suisse, I think they're undervaluing it, and I think they're undervaluing the ability of the new management team to be able to make a defining acquisition to be able to continue to grow the company. Do you think they have a plan, the new management team? Because I haven't heard that yet. So, I, you know, I think that that's the challenge. There's not a lot of time. Um, I think they probably have one more quarter to be able to target exactly what they want to do from a, um, a pipeline perspective and be able to tuck that in with what they already have. Uh, so, I, And I think that this is where, why the analysts are getting impatient. Um, but I do think that that was why the new management team was put in place to be able to find an appropriate target um, for acquisition. And, and I think there's other places you can go here. You could obviously go to the XPI, which is the ETF. Within the XPI, there's a biotech name. It's a mid-cap uh, Seattle, Seattle Genetics. That's an on, oncology player. That's about $19 billion market cap. That's been a strong performer. Regeneron, which is mentioned, that's also in yep. the XBI. So I think there's other places you can go while you wait to see if Gilead actually has a turnaround. I mean, Regeneron's been such a disappointment this year. It has. I mean, it, it's, just, it's done nothing. Pull the lens back a little bit further, though. Regeneron has performed better than Gilead has. I still think Seattle Genetics is the best. I don't disagree. I mean, I, for me, I just it, if I look at sort of the political landscape in 2020, I'm not selling, you know, biotech and, and pharma into weakness going into 2020. So, I, I, you know, I, I think the stock has, you know, has some room to, to move higher. And I think that the, the current management team will be able to unlock that. I mean, that they do move. have $30 billion that they can, that they they can work cash. with. I mean, that's yeah. huge. So this could be a transformative Comp, uh, uh, acquisition, and while you wait, it's a three-seven yield. I, I got a, I got impatient. I actually sold that and I bought AbV because AbV also has under which I which I own as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean that, yeah. that stock is extremely cheap, and I think the Allergan deal is actually very synergistic. But I don't think you can ignore that the sector, including pharmaceuticals, is laboring under the potential of price controls. You had a House bill go through. Senate's working on its own bill. The White House is working on its own but bill. But biotechs for years. have had a, a fabulous. No, I mean, year to date, the XBI is up 34 percent. If you look at some of these the names, the IBD like is up 25 and a half percent. If you look at some of these names like Gilead, like Biogen, like Alexion, these are trading at nine to 12 times earnings. Okay, so wherever they've been this year, it's showing that over many years they have lost that halo of deserving a higher multiple. And the reason they've lost that halo is because the threat of drug controls, now uh, price controls. Now, frankly, that may be the opportunity, but you have to take a stance on what's going to happen with price controls. If you get a progressive uh, president in 2020, this is not going to be the space that you want to be in. If you get somebody that's more uh, light regulatory, if you get somebody who's pro-business, these things are going to be home runs at these valuations. What do you think of health care in the year ahead? So I would kind of agree. I think it's going to be a, a very news flow driven sector for the next 12 months, you know, through the election. And if we end up getting a progressive um, leader in the White House, as you mentioned, then I think we're going to also deal with those headlines in 2021. So we could have really strong fundamental companies that are doing the right thing, that are generating profits, you know, that have very strong balance sheets that may just stay, you know, with a depressed multiple and under recognized and under owned by the market. It depends on your time horizon here. I think just yeah, I do think the headlines are going to matter. And although we love it from a fundamental side, you know, it, it's hard to want to go double your weighting in the sector at this point. Oh.